so far the most expensive book I had to buy was like an access code um, and that was separate from the book itself it was around 190 for this like math class at the time and it was like really expensive the most expensive book I've had to buy so far is a Spanish language textbook but we had to buy the book which was leaflets and it wasn't even hardbound <laughs> And then we also had to purchase the independent access code. Um, So I think all together, it was like around $175 to take it. And then I actually ended up withdrawing from that class later anyways. And you can't resell books or anything. So I was just out of pocket for that. I think I had one that was like $380. It it was awful. My entire college career, I've definitely had to avoid uh, buying books. (laughs) Um, A lot of the time, I either haven't made enough. um, I didn't really get any money back for school until like this semester. So most of the time, I wouldn't have enough to buy them. So I would just either find like the cheapest online version I could, or I would just like have people in the class send me the chapters, which is like always kind of a hassle. But Or even if they say you need it and you get it, you end up only using like the tiniest little bit of it. So it's like, I can get that tiny little bit from a classmate. I don't have to pay $100 for this, like three chapters I'm going to need for this whole class. Uh, Towards the end of my undergrad, I just stopped buying books. And I started being that person. And I would just ask to borrow like, oh, hey, can I just look at your thing? My book hasn't come yet. And I just lie. And then every time I just take a picture of every assignment that was posted. I was like, I'm not spending $200 on this book this year because added up, I have to spend $600 on books. I usually have to wait till I get my loans in before I can purchase them. And if I want to purchase them cheaper, it's online or Amazon. So by the time your loans get in, you still, you know, you have to order the book and then it takes it about a week or two to get to you. So usually the first couple weeks of the class, I don't have the book. You know, there's been a couple of times where it puts me behind anything I can to get it in my hands faster because there's no way I can pay for it. I don't have like money to set aside for that. The expenses of having to buy so many books, especially in your undergrad, where you're taking, you know, four or five classes, having to buy all of those textbooks. And then if you have a partner or somebody else in your household who's also still in school, um, their expenses, you know, they kind of combine together. So that first, you know, bit of the semester where we're trying to buy books and trying to figure out what we need and who needs what, um, it's really stressful on top of just the natural normal bills of being an adult. Now we have to figure out, okay, we only have so much left from our student loans or scholarships or TA ships. And now we have to try and scrounge to find how we're gonna buy this book. And actually we've talked about, okay, which ones do you need right now? Which ones can you wait on? And which ones, if you can't buy all of them, which are your most important? My first semester like ever at ISU, at the time, like when I was going to school, like my mom and my stepdad were going through a divorce. So like we didn't have very much money um, and FAFSA didn't even give me enough to like cover all my tuition. So my mom for my first semester, I didn't have it. I had like a couple hundred left on my tuition fees and then I had to buy my books. And my mom had to pull out um, what is it, the emergency book loan. And she had to like I, I felt so bad that she had to go into debt on top of me going into debt and that was the only way I was able to like pay for school in that semester and she just got caught up on like some other medical bills and all this stuff so it just it just really made me feel bad that like she had to go into debt to do that on top of me rarely using those books (laughs) so it was just kind of like a double whammy and then after that I like 
I waited until like almost like the first month into the semester to buy books if I needed to, just because I'm like, I'm not going into debt for stuff that I'm not going to use. I'm already like me and my husband together. It's already hard enough to pay rent and food. And a lot of times, like we just scrape by, right. We've had to go to a food bank and stuff like that. So when you have like a book in that, and then, you know, okay, well, I'm going into debt for this degree, but not having that book is I'm going to fail. And so it's like, okay, what can I cut back? Like, can we skip, you know, a couple meals, like do some creative financing, push stuff out on the side. To avoid the cost, I started not buying them and scrounging them off other students. And I started, I started kind of making it up as I'd go. And whenever they'd call on me in the class to discuss the reading, I could kind of BS it a little bit. And then it started taking a toll on the education because then it was like, okay, I actually need to buy this. I don't know if I have the money to buy this. And this is one that's absolutely necessary to continue. I mean, I would say, yeah, not having the books to do the reading or reference makes it really hard to pull references into assignments when professors ask. Um, last, last semester, I wasn't able to buy one of my public relations books. And it was like one of my favorite professors. And I felt... I don't know, I just felt very inadequate at the end of the my last project and she like gives me feedback and it's just like, you could have referenced the book for this and you could have like referenced this or added this. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I just couldn't afford the book. <laughs> if you get to the end and you're writing your final paper, your midterm, and I don't have access to those materials, you know, I'm losing points because I didn't buy the extra four books. I've definitely felt that in my bigger projects, my bigger assignments of not being able to hit my full potential because I had to pick and choose and I couldn't get all of the materials. It's happened a couple of times. So what I'll do is I'll I usually get like the older edition because most of the times they'll skip that chapter or the, they only added like a, a tiny little section. Uh, but there's been a couple of times like in group discussions where we're like, where was this at? And I was like, I read the chapter and that was not in there. And I think just like kind of starting the semester off feeling behind already puts you, me, I guess, in that kind of anxiety mode. And so the whole rest of the semester is just trying to stay above. And instead of just being prepared, you're kind of having to play catch up the whole time. The smartest thing I've ever seen somebody do, and I just, I guess I was never confident enough to do it, was we had one kid on the first day stand up in the, uh, at the end of the class. He's like, hey, I'm going to buy the book. However many people want to split the cost with me, we can all share it. And like the professor didn't say anything, but I was like, that's a smart idea. And so it ended up being like six of us jumped in on this book and it ended up being like $5 or ten dollars each my favorite thing and I definitely had to put my ego aside for this really hard um was I like reached out on Facebook and I'm like hey family and friends I cannot like afford this here's my Venmo if any of you guys like want to spread a little extra love my way um it's always it's always like a little pride hit having to like ask for money like that but like I've been doing that for the past two semesters and I've been able to get enough money to get my books Um, I, I guess for my professor specifically in the communications department, I want to say thank you because they really do go out of their way to get like the lowest price, but the most like current versions of the books. And I feel like in that, in my department, they do a really good job at making sure it's relevant and making sure that it's like affordable. But I would probably say for like all the professors who are in like general education, um, you know, when we're doing our gen eds, like 
half the time I feel like the books are way too overpriced. Um, I feel like it's kind of hard when you're like starting out. If we're going to buy a book, utilize it. If you're only going to have us read a couple chapters, see if you can find those chapters online. Like, I wish we knew beforehand what reading we'd be doing from it. So we can know like, do can I just get a couple chapters out of it? Do I need to pay the whole book? I was just thinking about like something to share with uh, instructors who teach general education courses because I think that's where we see it the most that we end up with these books that are very expensive because they're up to date, but also that we're not going to utilize in our upper division classes or grad school um, or professional, you know, uh, professional lives. I think I would share with, with teachers that do general education courses that, you know, try and incorporate more open and affordable resources for your students because they might just be taking this class to feel it out, to see if they like it, or because it re it's a requirement somewhere, it fulfills something for them. And so, yeah, racking up all of those books early on in your you know undergraduate career is kind of silly because I own books now that I can't, that I couldn't return or resell. And they're, you know, they're not anything I'm going to use in my graduate studies. They're not anything I'm going to reflect back on. I would urge teachers in those kind of areas to just investigate open and affordable resources, you know, because I, I think it also detours students from continuing education if they jump in and they're taking generals and every single class has a hundred dollar book. And if they're already struggling or something like that to, to get into higher education and to pay for it, you're really cutting out marginalized students already who, ha who may have had a difficult time getting there and being in the room. And now you're, you're using these expensive resources and maybe not utilizing the whole book and only parts of it. Um, that's really going to affect them, their perception of how they can succeed and other, you know, their, their life outside of the classroom too. I didn't say it, but somebody else in the class did. And it was kind of interesting because the response was like, yeah, so like, isn't that normal? Like, it, you know, it was kind of, I don't know. It's just one of those old system kind of things that's just perpetuating through. It's like textbooks are supposed to be expensive. And do you know how many chapters I read out of that book? Like three. I did have to tell my professors at one point in college, like I was not, I was like barely making it. And so I was lucky because I had classmates. My classes were like a little bit smaller at that time. So I just sat by someone with the book and I'm just like, Hey, um, you know, I'm going through some like life stuff right now. I don't have enough to purchase textbooks. Um, but here's my plan. And I just told them like, you know, I have, I'm friends with this person. They have the books for me. And my professors have all been like really open-minded and really understanding of it. Um, and then especially once COVID-19 hit, they're just like, yo, we got you. Don't even, <laughs> don't even worry. So luckily my response has always been positive. Um, I, I know that might just be department to department, but like, I love my department. They've been so good. They even reached out. I forgot about this. They even reached out at the beginning of the semester or the beginning of last semester. And they're like, uh, the department chair, uh, Dr. DeSanzo, he's like, if anybody needs anything, you need textbooks, you need help with rent, you need anything, reach out to us, we got you. And I'm going to say that is awesome. So I, I really love my department. I'm grateful for them. Yeah, no, all I've ever heard is just like, you know, don't share the books. It's illegal. You have to go buy it out. Um, that's all I've ever heard. Like, I've never, I would love to have just like free resources, especially like in my field. I'm, I'm in the field of media and journalism. Like that stuff changes like every couple hours. Like <laughs> so my math class used an open source book um, and then it was attached to a software for homework. And so the only cost for the class was like $20, $25 uh, for the online homework, but the book was open source and he provided the link. And so that was honestly amazing. And then I've had some classes where it was just all article based and those were provided.